In this video, we'll make a selection screen for our hero and I'll use this hero in our game scene and we'll be saving the last selected hero in our files. I'll start by making a new scene. I'll name it lobby. In this lobby scene, I'll make a canvas that will hold our play button. So I'll just make a button real quick. I'll add a small panel in the center which will be used to rotate our character or our hero. I'll make its albedo value to zero to make it totally transparent and give a background image. Now I'll make an empty game object. I'll name it hero holder and inside this empty game object I'll add a new script. I'll name this script selection hero script but you can give any name that you want to. Inside the script I'll make an array of game object that will hold our heroes and an integer I'll name it hero index. This integer will be responsible to tell us the last hero that we selected. For now I made a function instantiate hero and I'm calling it in start. Inside the function I'll instantiate our hero at hero index. The background image that I made was on an overlay screen and it was blocking the view of our hero. So I instead made a world canvas but you can also do this by making a sprite. If you remember from our previous videos, our heroes had their own joysticks and even a camera. So I'll remove all that and I'll make another prefab for just for the menu. And this prefab will only hold our character model. By now I was able to instantiate the model. And you can see it's becoming the child object of our hero holder as we did transform for the parent of the object we'll instantiate. So now we can simply rotate the hero holder object so the player can view the model in 360 degree. For that I'll add a new script in our center panel. I'll name it rotate player y as we'll be rotating the player in y axis. In this script I'll first give reference to unity engine.event system as we'll be checking the pointer down and pointer up on our panel. So I'll implement two interfaces i pointer up handler and i pointer down handler. You can do the left click on to implement the interface. Now I'll make a boolean pressed and I'll make it throw in on pointer down and will change its value to false on on pointer up. For rotating we'll make a touch system. Now in update we can simply check if the touch count is bigger than 0 then I'll do touch equals to input.getTouch at 0 index. Zero index simply means that we'll get the first touch that happens on the screen. At this point I can simply check if the finger is being moved by using touch face dot moved and if and if it is then I further use delta position to rotate our object and also we only want this to happen if pressed is true which means that player is touching inside the panel. After testing some values for speed, 5 seemed to be reasonable for the rotation. As I was using touch system, I had to test the rotation on my phone. I made a new panel for our selection screen. This panel will hold the button to select the characters. I gave it a green background and I'll make a back button so we can close this panel by pressing it. Change its position to place it at the top corner and I'll and inside its on click function I'll just disable the select character panel. Hence I made the function public and the back button was doing what it was supposed to. Now I just wanted a way to open this select character screen. When player doesn't move his finger, just taps on that panel area. 
the center panel area so what i did in our select hero script is that i made a boolean move and i made it true if the touch face dot moved is true and uh, in our on pointer up i checked if move was false then i made the character selection screen true and i made the move boolean back to false now i made buttons for our heroes in our selection screen so in our select hero script i'll make public function for changing our hero index so in select shooter function i'll do hero index equals to 0 and in our select throw function i'll make the hero index 1 but i wasn't happy with instantiating and destroying these heroes so what i did instead i made both the characters as child object of our select hero script itself and instead of instantiating i'll make a for loop for heroes dot length and check if i is equals to hero index then we'll enable the game object or else we'll be making the set active false and inside the buttons itself i'm calling the go back function as well this is how it should look by now so by now i was able to change characters but i wasn't happy with the rotation we did for viewing them so i removed all the else if statement for our hero holder i simply did touch dot delta position dot x actually it should be minus touch dot delta position dot x and the rotation was actually really smooth now and selection screen seemed to work fine as well well now it was time to save our hero index so we can use it forward in our game scene so i'll give reference to using system dot io cause we'll be saving this index in a file now i'll do using binary writer to write into a file inside binary writer we will do file dot open which will have two parameters the first parameter will be the path in which i did application dot persistent data path plus our file name so backslash hero index dot bst and do note that we can give any extension the second parameter will be to tell if we are opening the file or we are creating a new file so i'll just check if file dot exist at this path then i'll open that file else if the file doesn't exist then we'll create so just make file mode dot open if it does and file mode dot create if it doesn't while we are using binary writer we can do bn dot write hero index and now we can simply read this hero index in our game scene instead of doing all this in our change hero function i'll make a new void function save index and i'll just cut all this the saving index part and i'll move it in our save index function instead we also want to show the last selected character in our lobby so in start itself i'll read the file that we just made so i'll do binary reader new binary reader and i'll do file dot open and for the path i'll make a string now i can pass this path in our file dot open and also do file mode dot open now i can change the value of hero index by reading uh, reading the integer from our file so i'll do bnr dot read integer 32 and at the end i can simply call the change hero function as we don't want the file to save when we are calling change hero at start so i'll remove the save index function from change hero function and i'll add it at our button itself and don't forget to check if file exists before reading it and also close the file once we have read the integer and i just got an error that we can't use application dot persistent data path like this so i'll just set the path at start itself let's check if we are loading the last saved hero so i'll select thrower and i'll start the game again and yeah we are selecting the last hero so everything is working fine in our build settings i'll add lobby and game scene and now in our game scene i'll add a new empty object 
that will be responsible to instantiate uh, instantiate our hero this object i'll add a new script i'll name it instantiate hero script i'll give reference to our hero prefab in our array in start i'll do the same stuff as our select hero script now we can simply read the index and instantiate the hero prefab at that index we haven't given our play button any function so at so i made a public function for on click of our play button i'll be loading the scene at one index don't forget to use the unity engine dot scene management namespace now we can simply load the game scene you can find the index of your scene at build settings everything seem to be working fine if you remember from our previous tutorials our animations were not looking good so i ended up using blend trees for our animations and i had to reduce the range of our thrower so i divided the vertical and horizontal axis of our width to where we set the lines position i also ended up instantiating a sprite for showing the content of bottle splattering and if another enemy steps on this patch then he'll get damaged and this was the final output so if you guys found this helpful then please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you